Hey guys, Tanya Cardwell here, Pavlov Dog Training. I feel inspired to call bluff on a popular dogism that needs to stop. And that is that breed is irrelevant, breed doesn't matter, genetics have no say. And to be candid, that's just a bunch of baloney. It's a bunch of hogwash. And it's a narrative that's not helping dogs, it's not helping families, and we, we need to start being genuine and upfront about uh, the relevancy of breed and behavior. So if you think about it, this is a very consistent theme for hundreds, thousands of years of humans genetically playing God, playing deity, and selecting certain breed types, putting them together that make certain puppies that tend to have certain genetic dispositions, right? We have herding dogs that have an aptitude to herd. Retrievers retrieve, pointers point, protection dogs protect, dog fighting dogs, I'm going to let you fill in the blank with that. Northern breeds are awesome pulling sleds, right? So this seems to be publicly acceptable. We seem to be able to share this with, you know, hunting breeds and herding breeds. We seem to get it. But there's one genre, one family of dog breeds where this dogism is regurgitated. The genetics don't matter. Behavior is irrelevant. And that, folks, is with bully breed mixes. It's with the pit bulls and the whole family and cousins that are associated with the bully breed family. All right. Now, this narrative is being actively pushed by rescues and animal shelters. It's being marketed as, oh, we have a progressive, um, we're very progressive when it comes to breeds. We understand that breed is irrelevant to behavior. So we have stopped labeling breeds on the kennels because we think it's superficial and we just like to assess each dog on their own. I like the idea of assessing each dog on their own. The reality is, is that the behaviors that we see in the shelter are a small, tiny piece of what our behavior is. Just like if someone scooped you up on your front door right now and they hoisted you in a van and they took you to whatever, I don't want to say the, you know, the jail because I don't, yeah, that's not a good analogy. But if they scooped you up and took you somewhere, your behavior and temperament, you're only going to see what that dog looks like in that particular context, right? A lot of times these dogs aren't given the opportunity to go into drive, right? And the problems that these dogs commonly have when you really see genetic tendencies is when they're in drive, when they, that's the drive is utilizing a different part of the brain than when you're cuddling with them, when you're just walking them, when you're doing obedience with them, you're, at, you're not even using the same part of their brain than when the dog's in drive doing protection work in a dog fight, hurting, right? The, you're using a completely different part of the brain that is just not being kindled. It's not, it's not being encouraged. It's not being tapped into, um, in the rescue, right, in a rescue or kennel environment, you're not seeing that drive kick in. Um, so I just want to, you know, the, the big family, when it comes to bully breed mixes, that's, that's where this, this uh, mistruth is most popular and is being regurgitated is that breed is irrelevant. And the reason why I felt inspired to shoot this video is we have had clients after clients who have been sold this idea that each dog's like a, a ball of clay and so long as they socialize it and train it and mold it, they can make whatever little figurine that they want, right? They can make whatever that they're, they're responsible for all the inputs. The reality is, is that this ball of clay is not the same as this herding dog ball of clay or the retriever ball of clay or the protection ball of clay, right? They're not the same genetic composition, right? They're not, they're not the, made of the same stuffs. So you're not going to get the same end product. So I just really think that doesn't do the best. Uh, it does a disservice to a lot of people looking for rescue dogs. I think if we're genuine and upfront about breed tendencies, then we can address the needs of that dog, right? 
How can we fissure and channel all these natural innate drives in a way that helps the dog, that's safe for the family, that's safe for everybody involved, that is realistic and practical so that we don't sell this narrative that, you know, breed doesn't matter and they're just like, they're all analogous to golden retrievers or just a ball of clay that you need to shape, okay? That's not to say that training isn't, doesn't have an influence and that we can't mold behavior and shape it and encourage the dog into the right right direction. We absolutely can. But I'm just putting this out there to say, let's please stop the mistruth that breed is irrelevant, that genetics don't get a vote because they get a vote. They get the first vote. They get the vote of the hardware. You can only download software. You can only download apps if you have a hardware that allows you to do so. Okay. We're working with hardware. We can download stuff, but this hardware, genetics, matter. All right, if you have any questions, reach out. Ciao. <laughs>